joining us. We're back for season three of Flourish. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting us into your living room. We're so thrilled to be back. We've missed you. And um, maybe things look a little different here. Right. We've redecorated our family room and we are just thrilled that you're here with us today. So this is, as I mentioned, our third season of Flourish. And this whole season, we are going to be talking about family. So we invite you to join us. We hope you'll come every single week and that you'll become a part of our family. Well, you know, we've had a tagline with Flourish where we've said um, that this is a safe place where we can connect woman to woman. And we want that to continue. But occasionally, we're going to have gentlemen on our program as well because we can learn a lot from godly men. So today, I am so honored that I have my beloved husband, Tom, here with us. Tom, welcome. I'm excited to have That's you here for the very to be first here. program. So thankful that men can flourish too and we That's can be together. Right. That's right. Well, why don't we start by telling our friends a little bit about us. Wow, wow. So I met Joanne when we were in college together and fell in love in about 10 minutes actually <laughs> and just knew right away she was the one and wow, has God blessed us six children 13 yes. grandchildren. Another on the way. So we have almost 14 grandchildren. That's right. So we're praying for about 20 grandchildren. That's right. And we have been married 41 years. 41 years. And in those 41 years, I'll have to tell you one thing that Tom said to me when he asked me to marry him. It was the sweetest thing. I was 19 years old. Tom was 23. And he said to me, he got on his knees and he told me he loved me and all the sweet things. And then he said to me, Joanne, marry me and I'll show you the world. I'll show you the world. And you know, I'm a little starry-eyed 19-year-old. I never thought <laughs> about seeing the world. Um, and I knew he was going to be a pastor. But do you know what? God has really answered that prophetic word that Tom said, because we have been all over the world together, not just sightseeing and That's traveling. Right. We have been all over the world together sharing the love of Jesus. That's right. That's right. And I it had to be the Holy Spirit prompting that. It was a prophecy because right. I hadn't even been out of the country. So I don't know why I would <laughs> say that, that we're going around the world. I haven't been anywhere, but we're going to do this together. And amazingly, God did that. And we've been blessed to yeah. take Jesus around the world to That's different right. countries. That's right. So as we said, we have six kids, three girls and three boys, all adults now. 13 grandchildren, another on the way. That's right. God's favor and blessings have been great. But you know, it's not always been easy. That's right. We've had little bumps along the road yeah. like everybody, but boy, we are, uh, we've just been blessed with a great marriage. Well, we want to talk about family, um, as I said, this season. Right. And we thought we would start with these four basic questions that most people ask in life. Tommy, want to share what those four yeah. questions are? So this, the human heart yearns to know this, and they may not put it in these words, but these are basic questions that psychologists say every human being asks. Number one, who am I? Number two, how did I get here? Mm. Number three, why am I here? What's the purpose? Is there a purpose yeah. for my existence? And where am I going when I die? Mm -hmm. So the four questions are, who am I? Why am I here? How did I get here? And where am I going when I die? And graciously the Lord knows that we're asking That's those right. questions and he begins to answer that on page one of the of Bible. Our Bible. So you see I'm holding up my Bible here and if you've got your Bible grab it because we're going to be referring to it to today but all of the answers are in the Bible. In fact you know what God answers those questions on the very first page of his <coughs> Bible but before we go there Tom would you share that verse that we've been oh, um, talking about yes. from Psalms. Psalm 16.9 says this, you make known to me the path of life in your presence is fullness mm. of joy. And the history of mankind is this. They have been forever trying to find satisfaction outside of God. But the Bible says the fullness of joy, the best joy that you can have is in the presence mm. of God. Beautiful and that's what verse. Flourish is all about. That's right, beautiful verse. Okay, now flipping to Genesis chapter one, let's talk about creation. And remember, before time began, there was God. God always has been and always will be. God is outside of time. So, Tom, you want to start in Genesis chapter 1 and read those first four verses for us, Four verses, for us, okay. In the beginning, mm -hmm. 
God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and void, empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And then God said, and these are the first words we hear from God, let there be light. Mm. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And he separated the light mm -hmm. from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Mm -hmm. So beautiful, everything that God creates. In fact, I'm gonna read a list to you quickly of mm -hmm. each day what God made. Day one, God said, let there be light. <clears throat> You know, as I study the scripture, Tom, one of the things that popped up to me is God said, let there be light. And there was light. But, you know, he didn't create the sun and the moon and the stars That's until right. day four. That's right. But God's light was before he created those things. That's Why? Right. Because it says later on in the Bible that God is light. He is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of that's the right. world. And I think that's very significant. We'll get to that in a minute. But day one, God created the light. Day two, the skies. Day three, the land, the seas, the plants, the trees, the seeds, all according to their kind. Day four, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Day five, all the creatures of the sea, the land, the birds of the sky, all of those according to their kind. And day six, all the animals that live on the land according to their kind. Mm -hmm. And then each time God said, it is good. Then day six, Tom, take it away. What oh, happened on day well, six? God created man. And I just love this verse mm -hmm. in one, uh, chapter one, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. in our likeness, so that he may rule over fish in the sea and birds in the sky, even the li livestock and all the wild animals and all the creatures that move along the ground, created in the image of God. And so we begin to get the answer to our first question. That's right. Who am I? Right, right. So who are we? We are the crown of God's creation. And one of the things I love that Jesus or God does in this passage is he creates all the animals and they're alive. But then when he creates man, he breathes his breath That's right. into man's lungs. And so we are created in the likeness and the image of God. We are the crown of God's creation. Mm -hmm. And you know that, that question, because God, um, you know, what's that first question? Who am I? Who the am crown I? of God's creation. <clears throat> and I think that that connects with God is outside of time. God is eternal. That's right. And so now here we are on earth. And because God has put eternity on our hearts, because mm -hmm. we bear his image, that's why we want to know the answer to that question of, you know, who am I? That's right. That's right. And you know, the, the word in the original language for image uh, speaks of a coin where there might be an image of a ruler or a king on it where people could pick up that coin and immediately they would know who this represents. Mm -hmm. And of course, yes. initially, that's exactly what God wanted for us, that we would be his light bearers, that we would be his image, that people would see us and then they'd see, see him. him. Beautiful. Well, back to the garden. When God created Adam and Eve, one of the things that he did that's just so beautiful is he created an unbroken, unhindered relationship between man and God. Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship with each other, but they also had a perfect relationship with God. They met with God and talked right. with him face to face. It was pure intimacy intimacy with their creator and intimacy right. and oneness with each other paradise on earth. Oh my gosh, that's what it was. It was a picture of paradise on earth. And in fact, if you look at the Garden of Eden and see the unhindered fellowship with God walking, can you imagine walking physically with, with God? God? And we're not struck down dead because mm -hmm. of his holy, holiness and we have sin in our life. It was paradise on earth. And when we look forward to heaven, in the book of Revelation, there are glimpses mm -hmm. of what already occurred in the garden. That's right. But unfortunately, Joanne, 
Things changed. Things changed. Didn't they? Before we jump to the fall, though, one thing I think is important that we point out is that God created man and <clears throat> woman in That's his right. image. And so their roles were very complementary. They were told to rule and subdue the earth together, not rule each other, but the earth together. That's so true. And the first thing uh, God gave them was a mission together to be fruitful and multiply. And just like in the Doyle family with six children, mm -hmm. we, we tried to be fruitful and multiply and do the best to fulfill that verse. That's right. But there was equality in the garden. They were next to each other. Man was not mm -hmm. given the, the responsibility to rule over woman. He, he was pulled, uh, a rib was pulled from his side. Mm -hmm. And so they were complementary roles. That's right. And unfortunately, where we travel, Joanne, that's often the case that mm -hmm. men can dominate women, but in the Garden of Eden, this is not what God called us to do. That's right. That whole controlling thing came after the fall. Um, you know, one thing too, when we think about it, God gave this unbroken communication between man and God. And then he had this unbroken communication between husband and wife. They were to have children, fill the earth, multiply, you know, fill up the earth with these children mm -hmm. who also were intended to have a perfect communication between God between each other. They were supposed to marry and they were supposed to have the same marriage that Adam and Eve had. And that was to go on and on, generation after generation after gen generation, creating a legacy of people who had unhindered relationships with their creator, unhindered relationships right. with each other, and even, most importantly, in their marriage. But, unfortunately, there was someone else in the garden and that is the adversary. So God didn't create robots that mm -hmm. were obedient and never questioned. There was choice. And so God gave a test and all vegetation, all trees were open to Adam and Eve except one tree and what was the fruit of that right. tree. Just right. one and he gave choice and the presence of that tree showed that God wanted Free will. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. loved Adam and Eve. He wanted them to obey him, but not out of, you know, dutiful obedience, but just out of the love of their heart. And that's where their problems came. There was a clear command to be obedient and something changed. That's right. That's right. And, you know, we don't know how often the devil, the adversary, Satan. We don't know how often or in the ways that he attra attacked um, Adam and Eve. Scripture only records the one day that they did give in to that temptation and they <clears> fell. <throat> and Tom, you want to tell, tell our friends what happened that fateful day? It was amazing uh, in creation that um, Adam allowed Eve to take of the fruit. And so as far as helping lead or be a part of it, mm -hmm. he backed away. And like Joanne said, we don't know how many times the devil uh, tried to deceive them. But what he did is in his deception, mm -hmm. he plants questions in our minds. Mm -hmm. He plants questions. Did he say about this tree or all the trees? Well, no, that's not what he said. So he will take away from the Word of God. He will add to the Word of God, mm -hmm. and he will try to deceive us. And ultimately, what the devil does when he tries to deceive us mm -hmm. is this. He tries to reinforce one thing, and it's this. God is not enough mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. You need more. Yeah. You need other things. You need that fruit on that tree, mm -hmm. or you won't be complete. Did mm -hmm. he really say you can't have that? placing the doubt, doubt in the midst of them. Yeah, you know, another thing that Satan really tricked Adam and Eve this last time when they stumbled <clears> is he <throat> said, you know, if you eat this fruit, you will be like God. That's right. But we read before that God said, you know, you bear my image. You are, they already were like right. God. And yet Satan still caused them to doubt to the point that they um, took of that fruit and they ate it. And it's interesting because um, what we see happen is that Eve is the first one that she takes that piece of forbidden fruit. She takes a bite, That's but right. nothing happens. That's right. But then it says, according to scripture... Yeah, that Adam ate the fruit. She gives it to her husband. And that's when the judgment came after that. Right. That's the sin. That's it. And, and interesting, 
Adam was beside Eve. He did not stop her. And yet he's the one that heard the command that they were not to touch that or not to eat from that tree. Because if you look closely at scripture, Eve was not created until after God gave Adam that command. That command. Which is why I believe when Eve took a bite of that fruit, nothing happened. It wasn't until Adam took a bite. And that's what Satan will try to do with you. He will always try to pull the rug out from under the Mm -hmm. truth and make you doubt and make you question and try to get you to go a different way. But Paul summarizes this first sin Mm -hmm. in Romans this way, in Romans 5, 15. uh, Just as sin came through one man, grace came through Mm -hmm. one man, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So immediately there was a redemption plan. God had a plan to redeem humanity from the curse of the sin. That's right. You know, we have one thing we didn't mention yet, and we really want to stress is that um, family is God's masterpiece. But because it's God's masterpiece, anything that God loves and designs, Satan targets. So the family is God's masterpiece, so then it becomes a target of Satan. And that first family fell through Adam and Eve. And sadly, as soon as Adam took a bite of that fruit, within a millisecond, their eyes were opened. Mm -hmm. They did not expect to see their own nakedness. We see prior in scripture, it says that Adam and Eve were both naked, but they were not ashamed. There was no shame before the fall. Shame came right right. after they sinned. And the first thing, of course, they see is their own nakedness. And my thought on this, and I don't know um, how accurate this is, but my thought is, again, going back to light, God is light. Mm -hmm. If you've ever heard of someone that's had a dream of Jesus, or maybe you've had a dream of Jesus, one of the common things we see hear people say is they see Jesus and he's light. He's just illuminated as light. He's brilliantly bright. And so I just can't help but wonder, were Adam and Eve clothed in the glory of God? Did they bear his image? And in Mm. that, were they just covered in light? And as soon as they partook of that fruit and the glory of God departed from within them, did that light leave? And then their nakedness was exposed. It's really true. And sadly, when that shame entered, when that nakedness was exposed, what do they do? They go and hide. And Tom, you want to take it from there? So they had, had unhindered fellowship with God. But all of a sudden, after the sin, there is shame, there is guilt, and there's real fear, yeah. Joanne. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a fear. And also, we see how sin spreads. One sin spreads to another. They had this fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. Then they sin, and instead of covering each Mm -hmm. other up or trying to help, they immediately think of self. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with sin. It's a pattern. It takes off. And so our loving God pursues each one of us Mm -hmm. amazingly, even when we have fallen into sin. Mm -hmm. And the whole human race was affected by that one act. That's right. You know, God told Adam and Eve that when they sinned, they would die. Mm -hmm. And they did experience death immediately. The first thing that died was their unhindered relationship with God. All of a sudden, that was shattered and broken. No longer do they have that open communication with God. As Tom said, they were hiding. Mm -hmm. So that communication with God was broken. Their oneness was broken. As you just said, all of a sudden, they're thinking about themselves, not the other person. So that's been broken. And then, you know, bearing children, women, we know that that's always Mm. different. Now we will bear children in pain, work. Men will be pulling weeds out of whether it's a job of toiling in the soil or working in the business world. We're always going to be dealing with frustrations and problems. Death has touched every area of our life. Mm. And then additionally, we all one day will die. There is a hundred percent death rate Every one of us will die one day, which brings us to that question. What happens to us when we die one day? So true. And I think about the pain of childbirth and having six children and now the grandchildren. We've seen that. And I remember when we had our first child, Shanna, and going into the delivery room, and I I just wasn't ready for it. The pain, the (laughs) the crying out, the the sweating. And, And, of course, that was just me. Uh, Joanne was having some problems too in there. And, no, I'm, I'm teased. But anyway, it was scary and it was hard. Yeah. 
And so uh, all of this comes down from what happened yes. in the Garden of Eden. But I love this, Joanne. God always has a solution. That's right. And in Ephesians 1, he starts the book with this. He chose us in mm. him before the foundation of the Amen. world to be holy and blameless before him in love. Mm, before God created the earth, mm. he was thinking of you. That's right. So if you're feeling insecure, or if you feel that nobody listens to you, or I don't mm -hmm. have any friends, or my life is a mess, just know this, before the foundation of the earth, Jesus, God was thinking of you. That's right. And he had a plan for you. Mm, it's so beautiful. And that plan actually started back in the garden. Some foreshadowing took place. God saw Adam and Eve flimsily putting together those fig leaves and trying to cover themselves, hide their nakedness, hide their shame. And so God takes an innocent animal mm -hmm. and he sheds the blood of that animal, which is a foreshadowing of what Jesus will do one day on the cross when he dies and sheds his blood for <clears throat> us. But he sheds that animal, he takes the skin and he makes a covering for That's Adam right. and Eve to cover that nakedness. And now through that perfect blood of Jesus, he's called the Lamb of God. That relationship with God that was shattered um, can now be restored. That's right. God's masterpiece, Satan's target. The enemy goes after every family, every relationship, every marriage, children. The devil goes after that, but Jesus has a solution. And I love this. We'll go back to our verse again, Psalm 1611. You make known to me mm -hmm. the path of life. Yes. In your presence is the fullness of joy. Jesus is your GPS to heaven. That's he right. doesn't hide it so you have no idea how can i get here he's put eternity in our hearts and the road map is in the bible that's right and so there is hope the <clears throat> bottom line is there is hope we've answered those questions the first three questions let's review them and then we want to focus on that fourth question mm -hmm. so the first question who am i you are the crown of god's creation you are created it's created in the image and the likeness of God, you are the crown of his creation. Second question. Two, how did I get here? How did you get here? You were designed by a loving God. Even in your mother's womb, God knew you before you took your first breath. You were created by a loving God. Three, question. why am I here? You are here to have a relationship with the creator, God, who made you. And Number four, four, where am I going when I die? And there's a choice in that, and that's what we want to talk about now. And so from Genesis to Revelation, all 66 books of the Bible, mm -hmm. there is a golden path that's woven all the way through to show us, so we could not be mistaken on this, it would be as clear as day how to have a relationship with God, have our sins covered, and be in heaven with him mm -hmm. one day, That's right. paradise restored. Exactly. Just as that one sin sacrifice with the animal mm -hmm. in the garden was temporary, now we have a final sacrifice with the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. So you have a choice to make. And as it says in 1 John 1, 5, Tom, I love this verse. Would you share that yes. with your friends? Yes, yeah, this, is, this is how we can tell. He who has the Son has mm -hmm. the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. So do you know Jesus mm -hmm. as your savior? Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you have good thoughts about him. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have friends that are experiencing Jesus, may have had a, a, a dream about him. We wanna ask you this, do you know Jesus as your savior? Uh, have you given him your life and repented of your sins? Um, what is the path of life? God lays that out to us and the redeemed life is in Jesus, restoring our communion communion with God mm -hmm. and things will change forever once that is relationship with God is established through Jesus. Right, That's Joanne? Right. Exactly right. Oh my gosh. And it's such a beautiful <clears throat> path to follow because following the path of Jesus is where fullness of joy is found. Well, as we said over the next um, 12 weeks, we're going to be talking about family. And today we talked about the first family in the garden. And we talked about right. how family is God's masterpiece. So your family is God's masterpiece because it's God's masterpiece. It's also <clears throat> Satan's right. target. And so that means your family has been targeted. And so how do we you know, live a <clears throat> fruitful life? 
It's only possible in Christ. Right. He's the one that instills hope. And so over these next weeks, these are the various topics we're going to talk about is how we can That's live right. a abundant life in Christ. Hmm. Tom, would you close us? I'm sorry, didn't yes. mean to interrupt you, but yes, you close you us may, in you prayer. You may be thinking, uh, my family's not a masterpiece. It's not resembling that. It's quite the disaster right now. Jesus can take a hold of your family and everything can change. Just remember this. He says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, mm -hmm. and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I pray for every person watching today. First of all, a right relationship, the garden restored, is through the blood sacrifice of mm -hmm. Jesus, our Savior. So for any of you that are watching and you have never given your life to, say, to Jesus as your Savior, please, we plead with you, mm -hmm. pray this prayer right now. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a mm -hmm. sinner. I know that I've strayed from, from you, God. I, I pray that you would forgive me. I believe Jesus is my Savior and his death on the cross and his mm -hmm. resurrection and my belief and understanding in faith of this will change my life and give me eternal life. Jesus, I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, if you prayed that prayer, you are a new child of God and that rela relationship with him can be restored. Well, thank you for joining me today, it's Tom. To and here. friends, thank you for joining us today at Flourish. May the Lord uh, bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye-bye.